boys are out there somewhere, standing together against anyone who would threaten them. That's when I saw it. A goddamn steamboat. A steamboat? In a swamp? Yeah, Steve, but this wasn't much more than a wreck, really. But how'd a damn steamboat end up in the swamps? Yes, it floated off during the flood of 89. Now, was it a stern wheeler or, or a side wheeler? What, what? Does that really make a difference, Steve? It was a steamboat with a goddamn army on board. It was then that a fusillade of bullets come raining down from on high, green? and those vigilantes who accompanied me weren't anywhere to be found. <laughs> but among those men that were shooting at me, I thought I saw some familiar faces. Sounds like you don't give up too easy. That's the kind of man I am, Ben. I set out to do something, I do it. Surrender just ain't in my nature. Plus, I'm stubborn as hell. Right about then, much to my relief, the vigilantes finally arrived. Their leader motioned at a cabin in the middle of the top deck, pointing me directly at the Daltons. I finally had them, after months of dogged pursuit. Huh? But it turned out that they had me. Take him out! I'm sending you to hell! The Daltons had played me like a fiddle. Apparently, the vigilantes were on their damn payroll. They didn't just want to shoot me. They wanted to burn me alive. But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean liner. Well, yeah, but I was in a fight. 
hospital launch next year? Launch is one more. Um, we're <clears throat> talking about the Titanic. If you ask me, it's too blessed to be. I don't think it'll be slow. So anyway... Don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say that the Titanic uh, is unsafe. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, how'd you get off it, Mr. Grease? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection might be a bit hazy. But somehow, I managed to finally disembark. I was coughing up smoke and pretty damn pissed. I was done playing games with those boys. It was time to settle this once and for all. They were in this together. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side. They got it wrong. A sad end for those two. If they'd only known that Emmett was still alive despite his wounds. Paroled 14 years later, he moved to California and sold real estate and lived off the legend of that fateful day. And the tragic death of his two brothers. My own brothers died tragically as well, truth be told. It was 1868 and me and my older brothers were pulling a tidy profit running cattle into Juarez, Mexico. One night after my brothers retired for the evening, I found a little poker game in a cantina with a couple of cowboys. And I just couldn't lose. I even won an old Spanish coin that had to be a hundred years old. Well, I was mighty pleased with myself the next morning as my brothers and I rode for Texas. But before we crossed the border, those cowboys caught up with us. It was Johnny Ringo, Roscoe Bob Bryant, and another asshole named Jim. They wanted their money back and everything else we had including our lives, as those boys didn't want us coming for them later. Bob put that old Spanish coin in my mouth and said, I won't have it said that I left you with nothing, boy. Well, those horses bolted, and there we hung as those bastards rode away. The branch finally snapped under the weight of the three of us, but being my older brothers were bigger and heavier, they were already dead. And right then, I swore to myself that I would avenge them. Ringo, you know about. But Bob eluded me, until I heard he was riding with the Wild Bunch. I'd been on their trail for months, ever since they left their hideout in the Bighorn Mountains. Led by Butch Cassidy, they were a loose association of outlaws who robbed banks and trains from Colorado to Montana. Among them was the Sundance Kid, and that murderous hombre I was tracking, Roscoe Bob Bryant. Were you a part of that giant Pinkerton posse after the Wild Bunch? No, boy. 
A circus like that would have slowed me down. Besides, I wanted Bryant all to myself. They blew the bridge with the intention of forcing the train to stop. I was determined to make that some bitch Bob pay for what he did to my brothers. I found the device they used to blow the tracks, so I knew I was headed in the right direction. My ears are still ringing from blowing up that bridge. What'd you say? I can't hear a goddamn thing. Well, I made my Who's way off unscathed and came upon a few members of the gang and had no choice but to dispatch them. From there, I had to negotiate an even more precarious route. But first, I would need to get my ass out of there. the frying pan into the fire as the train was clearly fixing to fall. I found the gang, but in order to find old Bob, I needed to fight my way forward past a whole passel of desperados. Outside, inside, any way I could, I made my way towards my prey. This asshole don't know who he's with. Well, what about the passengers? It was mostly a freight train, as I recall. There were no passengers aboard that day. Too busy dodging bullets to worry about falling to my death. Odds were I was likely to die that day anyway, so I was determined to take down as many of those bastards as I could. You bastard! It was like shooting ducks in a shooting gallery. The only difference is these damn ducks shot back. I kept hoping the law would show up and give me a hand. You mean like that giant Pinkerton posse that I read about? Did they come riding in, guns a-blazing to help? From the Pinkertons? 
No, son. I had to fight the wild bunch all by my lonesome. As usual. Who the hell is that? Retreat! Retreat! He's killing everybody! You ain't seen the likes of him. He'll kill us all! didn't portray this as it happened, did they? Well, only a few stragglers were left, and I had to cut them down pronto if I was going to stay on Luke Bob's trail. Once I silenced all those guns, I went searching for my nemesis, determined to finally have my justice. But the only survivor who welcomed me was George Flatnose Curry. Who was he? The fastest gun in the gang. Right after Sundance, I mean. And Kid Curry. And maybe Elsie Lay. Though some folks might dispute that. Very same day, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid decided to leave the Wild Bunch behind and decamp for South America. They ended up living down there for many years, but I'm sure you already know all about that. I tried to find Bob Bryant, but it was as if he'd disappeared. Sometime later, I heard the Wild Bunch was back together. Kid Curry escaped from jail, and now he was running the whole shebang. So I took to their trail, as I was still in pursuit of my brother's killer and hoped that he was back with them. That Kid Curry's kinda crazy, ain't he? Don't let him hear you saying that. Anyways, I tracked those boys to a camp right outside Parachute, Colorado. Someone's coming! Who the hell's that?
Someone's coming! Who the hell's that? I just started taking those bastards down. Who's shooting at? We're on the Old Bob wasn't among them, and either was Kid Curry. I could sense him close by, however, plotting something nasty. I just needed a clue as to their whereabouts. <gasps> I found one. A map with their bold plan clearly marked. This time they were fixing to blow up a train trestle. Property of the Union Pacific. The plan clearly indicated how they were fixing to undermine several of the weakest wooden supports. Kid Curry was considered the wildest of the wild bunch. It was said that he fathered 85 bastard children. Though some say it was only five. <clears throat> Kid Curry had bragged to a whore how he was gonna rob a train heading to the U.S. Mint in Denver. And that whore, Fat Sally, she told me. The bridge was rigged with dynamite, so I decided I'd best be careful confronting those bastards. And I made it a point to remove any dynamite that I came across. A moment later, I saw a ladder that somehow had escaped my attention. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. But the Wild Bunch did not take kindly to my presence and attempted to blow my head off. It appeared the kid had found a number of new recruits to bolster their ranks. Guess there's always desperate men willing to trade their lives for stolen treasure. God damn you! Uh, what happened next? Well, having removed the first bundle of dynamite, I decided I might as well remove the other one. Once that was done, I figured I'd find my way from there.
the net. I had to remove more of that damn dynamite. I was sweating it a bit, but then I noticed a footbridge tied up on high, so I shot the rope. The dynamite? Funny you should mention that, darling. As actually there was a fourth charge impeding my progress. Once I removed it, my path was pretty clear. So I proceeded onward, I realized that that way just wasn't gonna work. I needed an alternate path forward. Luckily, I found a cave, and as I made my way back to the bridge, I saw something that concerned me. It was a long, burning fuse, and it was moving fast as hell. I had to catch it. <sighs> the burning fuse was so damn quick, I had to run like the wind. I almost had it, but no! I thought I was gonna have a coronary when I lost sight of those sparks. My heart was pounding like a sledgehammer. I was successful or clearly I wouldn't be talking to you folks here today. Naturally, I removed the last dynamite charge. Well, it was a touching reunion. But by this time, I was thoroughly exhausted and dragging my ass as I was not a young man anymore. Ah! Of course, I had to trade carefully. Otherwise, I could, well, die.
that as a weak. Make him bleed! Send him to perdition! Finally, I found those boys. Or more precisely, they found me. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, Kid Curry opened up on me with a goddamn Gatling gun. It was hidden in this tunnel and pretty well shielded.
Luckily, I had located some dynamite. I still, however, had my work cut out for me.
I brought that tunnel down. And that's when I met Kid Curry himself. He had decided to stop pussyfooting around and deal with me personally. as he was. I was just a bit faster. And as he lay wounded, I demanded to know the whereabouts of Roscoe Bob Bryant. He shouted at me. Is that what this is about? Bob went with Butch and Sundance to South America. You ain't never finding him. Those were his last words. So, uh, Bob Bryant got away? I knew I'd never find him in South America. What about the other killer? Yeah, you kind of glossed over that one. Well, I found Jim, not long after my showdown with Ringo. At the time, he was riding with the James Younger gang. Did I neglect to mention that? Jesse James? The greatest outlaw who ever lived? Jesse and his kin rolled with Quantrill when he raided Lawrence, Kansas, and killed near 200 people, boy. Ah, nothing great about that. And from there, him and his brother went on to rob banks and trains from Kansas to Missouri. Which is why there was such a rich bounty on their heads. Forty grand for both of them, dead or alive. That's one hell of a payday. confronted them as they were robbing a train. Bullets were flying at me from every which way. But I knew I'd have to fight my way forward if I was going to find this gym.
Wait a second. How'd they stop this train in the first place? Well, the James boys were experts at this. They hopped a freight train having heard there was a big payroll in the express safe. So, I hopped the same train. decimated after that little fiasco they had in Northfield, Minnesota. So Jesse needed more men and took on the killer I was after, along with a host of others. I was hoping to find my man and put a bullet in his head. around that train, I must have swallowed a hundred damn bugs before I the reached James that. James Younger Gang pulled the first train robbery west of the Mississippi. It sounds like you hold them in high regard. Everyone knows they were the most famous outlaw <laughs> gang ever. And you took them all on by your most. Again. I'm finding this all a little hard to swallow, friend. Well, maybe you need to wash it down with some whiskey. By the way, did I mention that that train was flying down those tracks like a bat out of hell? find the gentleman's facilities. Suddenly I have an urgent need to drain my one-eyed snake. Well, I've had more than a few drinks and uh, I've been sitting here for quite a spell. <laughs> right through there. Let me show you. I never heard so much malarkey in my life. Uh, you think he's bullshitting us? You don't think he's Silas Greaves? I think he's just some old drunk looking for some free liquor. Huh? I don't know, Jack. I think I believe him. You don't think he met Jesse James? Boy, you gotta be kidding me. That story makes no sense at all. Jack. I mean, you gotta be two bricks short of a load to believe that cock and bull story. I don't agree. Jack, lay off the oh, ball. You seriously think that tired old huh? man went toe to toe with Jesse James? Well, that's better. Did I mention that this Jim was married to the infamous Bell Star? Of course, I didn't learn that until later. Anyway, I made my way forward the best I could. Around the sides, over the roof. At some point, some son of a bitch saw me and shouted out, 
It's the damn Pinkerton. It's the damn Pinkerton! Now, I never worked for that limey cocksucker. But I guess they assumed I was one of his assassins. No, Those that. evil bastards firebombed Jesse's mother's house and killed his stepbrother. So it's no wonder each and every asshole on that train wanted me dead. Everybody's always mistaking you for somebody else, aren't they? Why is that, I wonder? Don't rightly know, Jack. I'm just telling you how I remember. I bet you are. It was a rickety ride and quite precarious. It was definitely safer on the inside of the train. I came across a flat car piled high with logs and had to come up with a creative way to make my way forward. I wondered if I was ever gonna find the front of that train. Or the bastard I was after. Jesse hired a damn army after Northfield. Guess he didn't want to be outgunned like that ever again. Right about then, I was attacked by some asshole on a Gatlin gun. Yeah, seems like you run into a lot of them. Asshole? Gatlin guns. Guess I did. Now, I don't remember how I took it out. It was either a bullet or dynamite. 
Where would you find dynamite? Does it really matter, Jack? You're messing with the flow of the story here. Looking for Jim and shooting any son of a bitch stupid enough to get in my way. And that included Jesse James himself. There sure were a lot of men determined to die that day.
It was then that Jesse detached the express car from the rest of the damn train. Ah! See Jesse waiting for me, fixing to kill me so he could get away with all that money. You had a showdown with Jesse James? Of course he didn't. Everybody knows that Jesse was killed by Bob Ford. Yeah, Jesse went out like John Wesley Harden. Coward shot him in the back of the head. Guess it doesn't matter how far you run, does it, Ben? Your past always catches up with you. I didn't kill Jesse James. Just wounded him bad enough to convince him to hang up his guns. What about that Jim fella? What happened to him? I figure he was up front with a gun to the engineer's head. That bastard slipped away again. I'll tell you how I got him. But first I need to wet my whistle.
After my showdown with Jesse, I continued to track his brother, Frank, and that son of a bitch Jim. I followed those bastards into the high mountains as they were going to ground. What mountains would that be? Somewhere in the Ozarks, I believe. A perfect place to hide out from the authorities. In fact, before I could find them, some Indians who fled the res and were hiding out from the military found me first. About another whiskey, Ben. Nothing better to soothe the troubled soul. Now, where was I? Indians, right. I had more than my share of run ins with the Red Man. Like that time. Did I tell you about Grey Wolf? Yes, sir. You did. Uh, of course I did. In fact, I can still remember that old medicine man's words to me. Jesus Christ, we're back to that again. You carry great darkness in your heart. Uh, it will claim your soul. Uh, you will come to this place again. And kill many more men. Everything you are. So, did you ever find it? The man you are after. Let me ask you something, Ben. You ever think about death? Mr. Graves, are you all right? Ooh, dear. Ooh, dear. Oh, 
won't you spare me over to another year? What is this that I can't see with ice cold hands taking hold of me? Well, I am death, none can excel. I'll open the door to heaven or hell. Oh, death, someone would pray. Could you wait to call me another day? Oh, death. Oh, death. Won't you spare me over till another year? So are you gonna answer the question? What question is that? Jim Reed. Did you ever find him? Reed was indeed that son bitch's surname. That's right, Ben. A despicable character. I remember him laughing like a hyena that cold morning they lynched me and my brothers. He was intent on avoiding my vengeance, but nothing was gonna stop me. Nothing. I finally did track those outlaws down. They had long rifles with scopes and were well positioned to pick off any poor soul who came anywhere close. I'm guessing Frank James believed I was responsible for the demise of his brother Jesse. I couldn't really disagree with the man as I thought Jesse was dead then as well. He backed off as I closed in on him, but he was still intent on killing me. And when I closed in on him again, he backed off again, looking for a better angle on me.
Well, I can't fault Frank for wanting his revenge as I was there for the same damn reason myself. At this point, I'm guessing you think Silas Greaves is a worse murderer than Jim Reed ever was. No, sir. A man who spent half his life killing somebody's brothers, fathers, sons. I think you were just looking for justice, sir. Is that what I was looking for, Dwight? Is that what it was? Justice? Isn't that why you were hunting the James Gang? The James Gang. Right. I finally found Frank holed up in his mountain cabin, and he was determined to have me dead. It was a pitched battle that could have gone either way. Luckily, I had some dynamite in my possession. Dynamite? On your person? A few sticks, just in case. It's always good to be prepared. Right. I'm just laying out the facts as I remember them, Jack. Shack? Well, it went tumbling right off that cliff. With Frank James still in it? Yes, sir. But Frank James is still alive, living in Missouri, showing folks around the family farm for 25 cents a tour. I didn't say he died in the fall, now did I? I'm done with this damnable outlaw life! Kill me, don't kill me, do what you will! At this point, I just don't give a shit. I explained to Frank that I had nothing against him personally and that I was looking for someone else. You want Reed? Have at him. I never did like that bastard. I am done here. We parted in peace as Frank pointed out the path to my prey before making his way back down the hill. So, what happened with me? Well, I finally found the last of the gang hiding in a nearby cave. First, I had to dispatch the lookouts. And I was determined not to let that murderer escape my revenge again. But rather than wander in willy-nilly, I decided it would be better to smoke that son of a bitch out. Hey, Reed! I shouted. No wonder you're so ornery. 
Can't be easy being married to Belle Star. While you're off providing for the family, she's spreading her legs for every Tom, Dick, and Cole younger. Not an attractive woman exactly, but very friendly. At least she was to me. Son of a bitch! It was then that the last bunch of bandits jumped out of hiding. Why won't this asshole give up? Would someone 